Hello, I'm here with Mark Lind from the Swiss uh, hard rock giant Gotthard. Uh, very pleased to be here with you and uh, yes, we will talk a little bit about your uh, MPEG rig. Uh, but let's start first about uh, how it all started. So, how did you start playing bass? Why did you choose the bass? Uh, what's the story behind it? Yeah, so first of all, hello everyone. Great that you're watching this and uh, yeah. Let's start. I mean, uh, I actually, I started to play guitar when I was six years, classical guitar. Okay. And I uh, had to go to school and to the teacher, and I really, I did not like that because I was already listening to status quo or something like this, or okay. to sweet and then the early bands, and uh, I want to play that kind of music. And so, uh, uh, when I was about 16 years old, I, I quit playing guitar and. Uh, and later on, uh, I met the guy, he said, hey, I'm playing in a band, but we are looking for a bass player, and hey, let's come and join us, you play guitar, it's almost the same. And I said, why not? So I went okay. out to, to, to try it, and uh, actually it was, was a bad rehearsal, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 somehow it, it, it touched me, and so I went back home and, and studied more, and then we were listening to other bands, and uh, uh, yeah, just got into it, and, and then it did not... Le left me anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even in these days, I would not swap again to guitar because I love bass so much, yeah. especially the rock bass. Uh, to, to, you know, to make the floor for the rock bands, to really make the bottom. That's that's for me. That's uh, unique. That's my life. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so. Uh, uh what would you say what were your main influences when you started playing rock bass? What, what were the big rock bass players for you back then? Mm -hmm. What did you listen to? So I was listening already when I was six years. I liked the hard bands in these days. Yeah. Sweet or Slade or stuff like this. Oh, uh, nice. G-Prick, even oh, yes, that yes. stuff. Yeah. Great stuff. And later on, uh, over, from, uh, over the Beatles to status quo and then Deep Purple and, okay. and Deep Purple, Whitesnake and, and, and the new wave of British heavy metal like Iron Maiden and especially Ozzy Osbourne okay. which the, the playing of Bob Desley really influenced me a lot oh, uh, nice. which uh, he made a fantastic work I mean in these days they only had one guitar you know a keyboard yeah. guitar bass and uh, he has a lot to do and he did it every time in the easy simple way but it was not that easy to play you know to listen it yeah. was like oh okay but if you really uh, rehearse it uh, it's it's not so easy and uh, yeah this was a, a fantastic discovery of course I tested even uh, uh, you learn even uh, other band Giza, Giza Butler from Black Sabbath oh, yes. or mm -hmm. even uh, uh, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden, oh, yeah. uh -huh. but underneath, you know, it depends the kind of music you make. And I was, every time was addicted to Cliff Williams of ACDs because okay. who who don't like ACDs? Everybody liked ACDs. Okay. Uh, for me, this is the most uh, amazing rhythm team. Uh, yeah. And so, and how did you get to play MPEG back then? So, were you looking for a certain sound, or did you hear bass players who were playing MPEG? I mean, I have um, seen MPEG a lot of times uh, when I was listening to, uh, uh, watching uh, the videos from other bands and okay. stuff like this. Uh, and uh, I did not know MPEG at that day because I was too busy to learn the bass somehow. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the first show started, and, and uh, I, I don't remember what gear I, I used to play, but uh, the first shows I had, or the first open air, I had a rental gear uh, because I thought every gear I can get is better than mine. <laughs> yeah. So and and of course uh, uh, there was an MPEG, you know, with a classic head. And, okay. And I plugged in and and I played that show and it was just amazing. It just had such a wonderful sound, punchy, good frequencies, and uh, especially uh, MPEG opens up uh, by bigger stage opens up after a while. You have the full sound and this is uh, that was uh, the moment where I said, wow. That's the deal. Yeah. So I learned to know uh, Ken Hensley on these open airs, and over the uh, Swiss dealer, I got my first deal with Ampec. It was about who? The 90s, somehow, uh -huh. 90, 91, something like this. And I used to have the classic, uh, not the classic, it's already SVT2, oh, yes. not the Pro. Yes. Just plugging one volume, no gain. Okay. Just volume, just power. 
and uh, yeah, it was an amp was every time running. It was a little bit heavy. Yeah, right. <laughs> they still are, right. but uh, uh, very very good amp. And uh, I played over ten years mm -hmm. with this amp, and then I searched for other things because sometimes you have to try to to, to get new uh, mm -hmm. ideas out, or in the studio especially, you plug in once another amp just to try. To find a new sound, to find another sound. Okay. And uh, since six years or six years ago, I, I switched back to Ampeg because it's, it's, it's. If you are a rock bass player, there's no way around Ampeg. There's okay, just right. Ampeg happening. Yeah, yeah. You can get them everywhere. You know what yeah. to deal with. They have enough power. Even if you play in South America or Japan, they have Ampeg. You found them everywhere, and. Uh, yeah, it's great uh, when you know what you have to do deal with. Yeah. yeah. So, what is your rig nowadays? Uh, I, I guess you're playing the eight by ten cabinet uh, for sure, right? Uh, and what head are you using? Uh? I'm playing two eight by ten, and I play. Uh, unfortunately, I don't make it anymore at the uh, SVT eight Pro. Okay. Nice uh, which yeah. for me is fantastic because first of all, only fifteen kilo. Okay. Pre valver, of course, transistor at the end. But I have 1000 watt per side, and what I like if you have a 800 watt speaker and you have a 1000 watt amp, you really can make it work. It's amazing the power and especially the frequencies with this head I can get out, especially with the low mid boost I'm having in there, right, yeah. which actually I don't add it, it's every time on. It's because there. It's, yeah. it's the way of our sound giving the bottom. Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so how would you describe the typical Ampex sound? <laughs> typical Ampex sound? It depends what head you use. Uh, for example, the Classics head, they, they are really round, they are warm. Even if you, if, you, if you turn them really loud, they are warm, they have warm mitts, okay. especially. And uh, round uh, uh, bases, or the bass fre frequencies. Right. But the other heads, uh, where you have transistor, uh, you can really make a hard sound and a soft sound. You have a okay. little bit more choice there, but less power, of course. Yeah. Except my amp. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but uh, I would say they are really flexible. You can get out almost everything. But me, I usually go on stage. I say to my roadie, if we have a rental gear head, just put everything into the middle except the the, the volume. And uh, usually you don't have to change too much right. if you already have a good bass. Exactly, sure. It yeah. starts by the bass or even sometimes by the strings and most time by the fingers or by the pick. By the play, yeah. I'm playing with pick since years. I used to play with fingers too or if we have some special unplugged jams I play with fingers. Okay. But we are a rock band and rock you need to hear the ging 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 ging, you know. Yes, you need, you need the, the attack. Uh, yeah, and sound. the swing there. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's just... It looks even better, you know, if you're a rock bass player and you have the bass down here than up here, you know? Yes. It's like it John Wayne yes. shooting from, from, the, from the hip. <laughs> from the hip, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. And you have a new album out now, or it's not completely new, but it's, it's your most recent right. album, it's called Bang. It's called Bang, yeah. And uh, very nice songs. On the opener, Bang, you have, uh, on, the, on the opener song actually, you have a very uh, distorted, distinctive bass mm -hmm. there, also on, on the hit Feel What I Feel. Feel What I Feel, yeah. Uh, what, what did you change there? Because I, I hear that the bass is pretty loud, mm -hmm. and you have, um, yeah, so it's a distorted bass. So how did you right. get this sound? Actually, we work with four lines, one safety line, which every time goes not even over amp, just uh, DI box for safety reason uh, from the bass direct into the desk okay. uh, in the re recording machine. That's safety reason if later on you feel you need another sound, you still can reamp it. Right. Uh, then we use uh, Ampeg, 500 watt uh -huh. combo. Uh -huh where I put in front a microphone, we want to even have the round bass and we want to have the air to push you. You're not only recording sounds, you even record uh, all between the, the speaker and the microphone. So there is a right. lot of air and you feel this somehow. Then we take the DI out, which the DI out by Ampeg is, is fantastic because you take this preamp feeling, it's, <clears throat> it's a little bit here. You the know? low it's, mids yeah, and, right. and it's, this, yeah, it's just, they have just grayed out. Yeah. 
and then we use a force line for add-ons like distortion. Okay. Where in this time I did it with an MX, uh, with a uh, sorry, with a way huge uh, with the pork loin. Oh, yes. Uh, which even I use live uh, to make the distortion great is because you have the original line and you can add uh, the, uh, the in distortion, one, in the distortion uh, uh, and this all in one. All right. Okay. So you effect. don't lose the, the low end. The bottom uh, end. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Using the distortion there. Yeah. Right. And. Uh, and uh, the fourth line sometimes even you use a camper with a with a guitar amp simulation to get a distortion. Okay. Uh, it's every time different. It's a, it's a huge search really to 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 find the really the real sound which fits in this song, you know. Right. And uh, okay. uh, we even had even cheap tube screamers or or uh, we tried MXR pedals a lot fuss and 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 uh, to to this. As soon as you start to add effect by a bass, it has to be good. Yes. And you have to have the right quality, and this is a long research yeah, how much yeah. to add and whatnot. Yeah. And how much not. Yeah. Yeah. How would you describe this, the, the bass sound uh, in, in the band in God Hurts? That's difficult to say because it's changing every time. I mean, early days we used, uh, in the real beginning, we used even a little bit, you know, this, this uh, grumbling okay. bottom. And, and then we swapped over to a clean, almost hyphy sound. Uh -huh. uh, Def Leppard style a little bit. Uh, okay. and this was, was, for, was for a long time. Uh, so less mids, more bass and high. And right. uh, actually, I, I don't like when you hear the gling, 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 you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I hate that. Or the fingers, the gling, gling, gling. This, too, too this many highs. Clappy, uh, clippy yeah. stuff. I like a, a, a clean, good sound can even be distorted. I mean, clean that you don't hear your finger work or something like this. Or when you shift up, shh. The, the, the slides oh, yes, and yes, stuff yes, like yes, this. Yes, yes, uh, yes. No. But, but you want to hear the, the notes very distinctively, the notes. What, what the bass is really playing. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And and therefore uh, it changed within when we restarted the band because we lost our singer and we found a new one, really fantastic, great singer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there it was about time to change something. And okay. there it started with the first one, Firebirth, with the first distorted basic sound which we took all over the album okay and in this uh, bang album we even said okay we take this basic distorted but in some songs which needed we add more distortion okay and even live and playing uh, I mean Ampeg you can send and return it works really perfectly yeah yeah uh, but uh, mostly time I'm even going in before before I go into the amp I go over the pedal all right uh, just to add the sound like like Almost everyone is very doing simple. It. Yeah, yeah, very simple. Correct. Uh, my the sound between studio and live is changing all the time. Okay. Because uh, first of all, it depends what album you are doing, uh, what direction. Sometimes you have a harder album. Sometimes you have a darker album. Then you have a happier album. Okay. It, every time switch a little bit. Okay. So so the sound uh, usually from my base is every time getting adjust to what we need for the album. Yeah. Life uh, depends, of course, you cannot play the same uh, sound in the studio like you play live. Life, first of all, you need to hear yourself, right. and all the stages are different, and uh, sometimes you need more bass because you have a, a stone floor, and sometimes okay. you have a wooden floor, and then you have so much bass from the PA coming that you maybe need more mid-range and more highs to hear yourself. Right, yeah. And, yeah. and it's even a, 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 it depends even the sounds of the guitar players. Uh, it's every time a, a little adjust uh, during the first two, three songs, okay. where you adjust a little bit, uh, take out or get in some, some uh, special frequencies uh, to, to really feel comfortable All right. after a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, I would say. Uh, yeah. Is there anything you want to add to, yes. to our spectators yes. here, first to of our all, YouTube viewers? First of all, I would say, if you are really a rock bass player, there's no way around it. Sooner or later you will go back, so go straight there. Ampeg is fantastic, and I discovered today something really special. Oh, nice. I have this new DI box with preamp, I have to show you that. <laughs> and what I do right now, I'm taking this, I got this, so I will go home and I will plug it in right now. Okay. Dimitri, thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. See you bye next bye. time.